Hello, this is Taylor. The title is true. No clickbait to be found here. I have left management consulting forever and there is a lot to cover. I'm gonna reveal details in this video that I have never said publicly before. All the places I've worked, my very honest intrinsic motivations behind my decisions and more. So let's jump in. We're gonna cover the following. Just because I'm not a consultant anymore doesn't mean I don't still organize my thoughts like one. First, a recap of my whole professional journey. And this won't just be a recount of events. I'm gonna tell you what I learned at each step of the process, where I worked, and how all of this informed the decisions to be where I am today. After that, why I left consulting and why I will never go back, and what I'm doing next and plans for the future. Fun little section. So let's start off with that recap of my journey to here, because my professional journey has been a pretty long and winding road for someone who's only 26, which I like, but if you've only read the titles of my videos or you're brand new here, Hi, I'm Taylor. It is understandably a bit confusing how I went from day in my life as a consultant to I quit my consulting job to I'm back bitches to here. So I'm gonna give a recap. And even if you've been here for a long time and followed along my journey, thank you, first of all. I'm still gonna reveal details in this recap that I've never said before. So stick around. In this recap, we're gonna cover the following. My education, which is what influenced me to go into consulting in the first place. My internship experience, also major points of influence in my professional journey. My unplanned COVID gap year, which is where YouTube entered my life. My first consulting job, where I worked and why I really left. The interim period between my two consulting jobs and the learning lessons that I took away from that period. And finally, my second consulting job, which is the one I just left and that will bring us to present day. So starting with point number one, my education. I was born in 1997 in Los Angeles, California. Just kidding, we can start at college. So I graduated from the University of Pennsylvania, UPenn, specifically in the Huntsman Program of International Studies and Business in May of 2020. We all know what happened in 2020. And this dual degree program is half Wharton, which is the business school at Penn, and half international studies in the College of Arts and Sciences. And it was this educational background that I came from, the Wharton half of it specifically, which was for sure the prevailing half, that really influenced me to ever consider consulting. It's a business school filled with the, I swear, most high performing people I've ever met. And year after year, just about all of the people in my life were going into finance or management consulting for their summer internships or for their full-time jobs after graduation. And I was no different. But before I was ever in consulting, I actually did two internships in finance. Which brings us to our next section, moving along nice and swiftly here. So I had two summer internships in New York City, both of them in finance, and specifically in alternative asset investments. The most formative of those two summer internships was the summer after my junior year at Blackstone, where I did not sleep very much, but took away some good learning lessons from being in such a high performance and high pressure work environment. But my ultimate takeaway from these internships was that I realized pretty definitively that my brain and my work ethic really did not thrive with what the day-to-day -day of those jobs entailed as much as I wanted it to. I do have an analytical mind, but only to a limit before my brain starts to crave a very healthy dose of creativity and strategy. And it was this desire for more creativity and strategy that drew me to recruit for consulting for my full-time job post-graduation. We can unpack later how creative consulting actually is, but that was my thought process at the time. So the first month of my senior year of college, I learned how to case, referring to the case interview that you have to do for consulting firms. I interviewed around and received a full-time job offer from a consulting firm in New York City. I had the luxury of choosing from a number of start dates and so this was pre-COVID. I chose the latest possible start date because I wanted to travel a bunch after graduation using money that I'd saved up for my internships. And then COVID hits. Enter my unplanned COVID gap year. I wonder how many times we've said the word COVID when just a few years ago that meant absolutely nothing crazy. So COVID hits March 2020. Lockdown starts only two months before I graduate college. I have a shitty college graduation on Zoom. Yeah, I know there are bigger problems in the world, but it was not fun. And obviously all of my travel plans come to a halt. I go home to LA where I'm from to live with my family after graduating. And I get news not that long after from my consulting firm that my start date gets pushed back even further because it's the middle of COVID. Businesses stop hiring consulting firms and the last thing that consulting firms need is a whole bunch of new hires starting. So there I was with nearly a full year between graduating and starting my first consulting job. And what was a girl to do to stay busy? I couldn't really leave the house. We were in the middle of lockdown. So I started reselling clothes from home as a little side hustle to stay busy. And I learned how to do that from YouTube videos. And after getting deep in the reselling game, I was like obsessed with it and learning how to get really good at it from YouTube videos. I thought, hmm, 
I kind of want to make videos about that too. That looks fun. And with that, my first ever YouTube video was born on August 20th, 2020, about how I started this little side hustle from home during quarantine. And over the next eight months before starting my consulting job, every ounce of my being was consumed by YouTube. Learning from scratch how to film a video, how to edit it, how to grow a channel from zero subscribers, how to be less awkward on camera, all these things. I was obsessed. I could not wake up in the morning and not do it foreshadowing. <laughs> now, fast forward eight months after posting my first ever video on YouTube, we're now at April 2021 and my start date for my first management consulting job, which was at Oliver Wyman in the New York City office, has finally come. But COVID was still around, so we started virtually over Zoom, which sucked because a big appeal of consulting to me was having a big start class with a bunch of other people my age, getting to meet everyone in person and kind of forming this new friend group in my life. First day. First day at work, first day at work. Are you gonna help me? You really should dial in for me. You should dial in for me. You're much cuter. A little helper. And here we are today in the same spot. You're so much bigger now. But COVID, I was still at home with my family in California, even though my job was in New York. And so I honestly felt somewhat disengaged from the start. And it didn't help that all I wanted to do was YouTube. It was all I had done the previous eight months during that gap year. I had grown my channel to 13,000 subscribers by that point. And so I'd already seen some success with it, by no means a full-time income, but my channel was monetized, it was growing, and I was just having so, so much fun with it. So fast forward, I officially moved to New York City in September, 2021 and start working a bit more with my teams in person. And some more honesty here, I never really felt passionate about that job, even when I started working in person. I didn't feel a strong sense of connection to my firm. They didn't do anything wrong, but I think it, this was in large part because we started over Zoom. So how connected can you really feel to it? And another reason was that, and I've never said this before publicly, but I had my sights sort of narrowly set on a different firm when I was recruiting for consulting because a seemingly disproportionate number of my friends from Penn who graduated like two or three years before me worked at this firm. And so I had just heard really good things about it over the years. And so I kind of always had that firm in the back of my mind once I started recruiting for consulting. And I got the Super Day in their New York City office, Super Day being the final round interview. And then I did not end up receiving the full-time offer for that firm. So this firm was always kind of in the back of my mind, I think, which we'll talk more about right now. But yeah, just being honest. <laughs> Oliver Wyman is a really great and prestigious consulting firm to be clear. But I think that I personally always had in the back of my mind, hmm, what if I had got the offer from my first choice firm? And what if I'd started in person and had this start class? Plus, Oliver Wyman's specialty was in financial services work, and we've already established that that wasn't my passion. <laughs> While my top choice firm specialized in other industries that I was a bit more interested in, like consumer goods, uh, fashion and luxury, which had actually become an interest because of reselling, among some others. And maybe I would like consulting more if I was working on projects within those industries, I thought to myself. <laughs> Plus, I would be totally lying if I said, that part of it wasn't that I wanted to prove to myself that I could get an offer for my top choice firm, which was an MBB firm. MBB being the three most selective strategy consulting firms, McKinsey, Bain, and BCG. And honestly, I, and I mean this, I really am not a hyper competitive person in my day to day. I'm really not. But as I wrote the script and reflected on this whole experience, there are a few things in my life where I just will not give up. And for whatever reason, this was one of them. So this led me to again, recruit for my top choice consulting firm while I was still at Oliver Wyman. I got back into the muscle memory of the case interview. I got the interviews and lo and behold, I get the offer from my top choice consulting firm, which was BCG, Boston Consulting Group in their New York City office and leave Oliver Wyman after a little over a year. Begin the interim period between Oliver Wyman and BCG. I now had three months off in the summertime between the two jobs. And to understand how I was feeling about all this, whether or not I was really excited to start at BCG, I have to tell you how YouTube had progressed to that point. So like I said, I never stopped making videos that whole entire time. And by the time I left Oliver Wyman and got the offer from BCG, my channel had grown to 100,000 subscribers. But much more importantly, I never stopped loving it. I was still just as obsessed with it as I was from day one. So with these three months off between the two jobs, I vowed to hit YouTube as hard as I possibly could. Looking back, I actually worked longer hours that summer at some points than I was in consulting, which is crazy to think, but it was for myself and it was for the thing that I loved. And so it did not feel like work 
again, foreshadowing. <laughs> Enter our final section of this recap, consulting job number two. A lot of people have asked me why I ever even started at BCG if YouTube was going so well. And that's a great question. And it was not an easy decision, which sounds kind of crazy. I know, especially if you come from the business world, it's like, what? And it's something that I felt a lot of guilt about for a long time, because here I was with my dream job offer at the firm that I had wanted for years at that point. And now to be questioning whether or not to even take it, I was like, Taylor, what the f how could this be? But that's how it felt. And anyway, the way I made my decision was what would I have regretted more? Going all in on YouTube and not starting at BCG, but always having this what if in the back of my mind. What if I would have loved BCG? And what if I liked consulting, but just didn't really like it at Oliver Wyman for the reasons we discussed? Or starting at BCG, my top choice firm, having that on the resume, which is super valuable, but my YouTube channel is slowing down quite a bit because I wouldn't be able to make as many videos with such a demanding full-time job. I decided I would have regretted more to not start at BCG and always have that what if? I didn't want that. So I took the offer and funny enough, the day that I started at BCG is the same day that I hit 200,000 subscribers, but I was determined to still do both jobs. I'd done it before, but little did I know this cognitive dissonance, which is like the discomfort a person feels when their actions do not align with their values, would eat away at me slowly but surely for another year. <laughs> More on that soon. There's a happy ending. Okay, so we're now at present day, and after over a year at BCG, I left and became a full-time creator. Given everything I've said up until this point, it is probably so easy to think, well, yeah, about time you freaking finally followed your passions. <laughs> I wish it was that easy. The truth is it was grueling. Until my very last day on the job, I was in some sense still desperate to cling onto this job that I didn't even really like at that point because it was prestigious and pretty much everything I'd worked on in my life up until that point was to put me on a path of success in the business world. And so again, this cognitive dissonance of knowing deep down that I most valued things that BCG and consulting did not give me was very, very difficult. And I recognize how privileged of a problem this is to have. I cannot overstate that, but that was the reality of it. So why did I leave and why will I never go back? Time for some more honesty. <laughs> Honest tea. <laughs> anyway, that's stupid. Okay, the short answer is I don't like consulting. I wanted to like it but that is the truth. And the reasons I didn't like it were so amplified by the fact that I had this other thing that I loved so much that I could no longer put all my time and effort into because of the consulting job, which unfortunately just made me grow to resent the consulting job more and more as time went on. And so a lot of this is very personal to me. I wanna make that super clear because I do think I would have liked consulting a bit more had I not had YouTube, but I wouldn't have loved it. And you'll understand as I explain this. So I'm not gonna go into all the pros and cons of consulting in this video because I will be doing a very thorough final review very soon, but this video would be incomplete without telling you the two main reasons that I left, which are the same reasons why I was not built for consulting and why I would never truly excel at it. And the reasons are having very little skin in the game and more importantly to me, the game not being my own. I'll explain. So regarding that first part of having no skin in the game, consulting is the business of advising, not doing. And for all of my faults, of which there are plenty, I am a doer. And that is a huge reason why I would never be a great consultant. So the product that consulting firms sell is advice, more specifically, a hopefully valuable plan of action for their clients to implement to improve their business in some way. I should say there are a wide range of project types and there absolutely are consulting firms with a big focus on implementation. But the average project at a strategy consulting firm will more so focus on kind of those less tangible things. However, whether or not the client actually implements that plan of action later on, and if they do, how does it go for them? You never really know. You develop the plan and then move on to the next client. That's how consulting works. And you never really see the fruits of your labor. More specifically, you don't bear the consequences, good or bad, of the plan that you help put together. Sure, if it's a repeat client, you might work with them again a year later and hear how things went for them. Let's say they implemented the plan and it went terribly. You don't face the consequences of that. It's not your business. Or more likely, if they implemented it and it went super well, hence why they're a repeat client, that's great, but you don't feel the fruits of your labor. You keep your job either way if you're good enough. 
You don't get paid more if the plan turns out spectacularly. Nothing for you really changes if you're a star consultant, besides the obvious things like having a good reputation within your firm, making your manager's life easier, feeling some fulfillment and pride from putting in good effort into something, a slightly higher end of the year bonus. Like, of course there are benefits to being a good employee. I'm not saying you should be a shitty employee, but your success is limited. It can't really scale from there. That's just not how the incentive structure in consulting is built. This is at the associate level, by the way, like the bottom level. Once you're a partner at a consulting firm, the job totally changes and you do have skin in the game. Even at the manager level, you have a lot more responsibility, kind of resembling skin in the game. And so, big caveat, this is the associate level. And so it was this lack of tangibility, I guess you could say, that really got to me. For me to be really motivated by something and the way that my mind works, I have to feel a very close tie between how much effort I put in to how successful that thing turns out. Finally, on this skin in the game point, or lack thereof, I should mention, and I say this in good faith, that any plan my team's ever worked on was a really valuable and data-driven plan, which might surprise a lot of people because I think a big criticism of consulting is that the plan you put together is just fluffy bullshit. I'm sure that's true in some cases, but I do feel the need to say that any person I ever worked with was truly dedicated to delivering value, which I respect. So on to my second main reason, time for some more honesty. If I ask myself, Taylor, if that problem you just described of having no skin in the game was somehow fixed, if you were directly affected by the results of the plan that you put together, would you have liked consulting then? The answer is still no. And this is because I am an entrepreneur. I don't think that these things have to be mutually exclusive, but for me to be truly motivated by something, it has to be my own. Or at the very least, something I am extremely closely tied to or feel very passionate about, where I have a lot of my own skin in the game. So maybe in the future, that's a startup that I really believe in, that I get in at, at the ground level. More likely than not though, it will be my own business. Right now, YouTube is my business. And so that is my second main reason, the game not being my own. And this is such an important point. I want to really emphasize that this problem is not one size fits all. I have a lot of friends who have been in consulting for years and sure they have some complaints now and then, it's a hard job and no job is perfect, but generally they are fulfilled by the work that they do and have absolutely no desire to start their own thing. Not to mention financial stability, job stability, corporate benefits, feedback culture, colleagues, learning opportunities. Like there really are so many benefits to consulting. So don't let me convince you that you won't like it just because I'm up here on my entrepreneurial soapbox. The job is just simply not aligned to the type of work that fulfills me. And I now know that about myself with full certainty. Final comment I will make in this section, and it might sound a little cliche, but there is more nuance here besides just no regret. I do want to note that I don't have a single regret from this journey. If I could go back in time and tell myself to never go into consulting and just do YouTube, I would not have. Because every decision I made thoroughly informed the path I took to get here. And without those decisions, I wouldn't have, importantly, the level of conviction that I have now that I'm doing what I should be doing. Without this conviction, I know about myself that I would feel kind of lost and untethered as a full-time creator, probably questioning every single day, what am I even doing? Why am I not in a corporate job like most of my other friends? Now that I've done both, I am sure of what I want. There is no question. And my path might totally change in the future and that's fine. But in this moment, I have never felt more sure about something. It's a great feeling. Okay, moving on to the fun section, some life updates. What I'm doing now, what I've been working on and some plans for the future. As I said, I am now a full-time creator, like for real, for real this time. <laughs> Unlike when I did it between the two consulting jobs, I knew BCG was coming up and so I had that safety blanket. No safety blanket now, I am on my own. I pay for my own health insurance, which sucks. <laughs> Ooh, this is fun, plans for content. I think I will always have a mix of business and lifestyle because in my experience, those are the most difficult kind of videos to edit, but they don't intellectually stimulate me. And that's where videos like this one kind of weave in where I spend a long time writing a script or teaching something or putting together some kind of argument. Those are the videos where I feel like I really push my thinking while the lifestyle videos push my storytelling as a craft, which is super important, and my editing skills. So a combination of those two is the plan. Also forgot to mention another plan for the future. I'm gonna be a lot more active on LinkedIn. It's just gonna be another place for me to get thoughts out and also business related content, stuff about the creator economy, things that just I'm dealing with on a day to day. So super excited. I am a closeted LinkedIn fiend. Anyway, that's a fun update. So follow me there. And with that, I tip my hat 
to consulting because it illuminated for me what I want to do with my life. And that is worth a whole lot. Until next time, turtle out. Plus, if you work for yourself, you can just come home to LA to see these rascals every now and then. You know what I mean? <laughs>